Hello everyone. Uh, welcome. We're going to be doing a very special channeling today. Uh, we are going to be channeling with the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, I'm Barry Strome. And I'm Connie Strome. And I will be asking the questions and Muhammad will be channeling his answers through Barry, as usual. I want everyone to understand that I'm simply the messenger in this and his answers are his own and I am just simply speaking his words. So we are very pleased and honored that the Prophet Muhammad is with us. We've been to, we are going to be trying to do challenges of all the great religions and obviously Islam is one of the greatest. So without any more delay, leave us start with our channeling of the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad, how do we know for sure that we are channeling the Prophet Muhammad? There are many that will doubt that you are truly channeling me, but I can assure you that you are indeed talking with the soul that when he walked the earth was referred to as the Prophet Muhammad. I will try to answer all the questions truthfully, and I think that those that listen to the entire recording will understand that you are truly speaking with me. Okay, would you start out by telling those that would contemplate violence towards Barry and us for bringing this channeling of your words? The last thing that I would want is any harm to come to the two of you for speaking my words and for attempting to bring the truth of my life forward to all that will listen. I hope that all who follow Islam will follow my advice and respect what you are doing. Thank you for that. Are you a member of the soul family of God? Yes, I am. God sent me back to try to bring the individuals in the area of what you now refer to as Saudi Arabia to a religion in which they worshipped a single deity. He sent me back and I did the best to follow his commands. Yes. Is Allah the same as the God of all religions? There is only one God. Yeah. You may refer to him in many ways. I refer to him as Allah. I want you to know that however you refer to him, there is but a single deity. That's sort of what I thought. Okay. Historical sources say that your father died before you were born and your mother died when you were only six years old. Could you tell us about your parents? I never got to know my father until I returned home. Then I got to meet him and he is a wonderful soul. My mother was a beautiful person. She raised me until she fell ill and passed at the age of six. My uncle took over basically raising me and allowed me to come into his family. And I have much honor to bestow upon him for that act. Yeah. Could you describe the social conditions and society of that time? When I was born, the members of my tribe worshipped many different idols and gods. We were merchants and it was thought that certain idols would protect the merchants, the merchants as we traveled throughout the country. I grew up thinking that there were indeed many gods that would protect us. It was not until I became much older that I would receive messages that would tell me that my God wanted me to preach the fact of a mono deity and that he wanted the people of the Middle East to worship a single God. 
Did you have a happy childhood? Yes. I, I missed having a father, but my mother did the best she could. Once she passed and I was welcomed into my uncle's family, I was very friendly with the other children that he was raising as well. It was a difficult time, but as merchants we had access to goods and we lived quite a comfortable life. Okay. What were the predominant religions when you walked the earth? When I walked the earth, Christianity was just starting to come into its own. It had been many years since Jesus had passed. We knew of the Christian teachings and there were some people in the area that did conform to the Christian church. There were members of the Jewish faith, we were familiar with them, and there were members of tribes that worshipped different gods and different images. Why did you feel that these religions needed to be corrected? In my youth I did not feel that, but as I grew older I started to receive messages. I would see dreams, I would hear voices in my head, and I was being directed that I should come forward and attempt to introduce the individuals of the Middle East where I lived to the concept of only worshiping a single God. So then you did have psychic gifts at that time? Yes. I had, I always had dreams where I saw images and I always had voices that would give me messages. I did not tell many about it because I feared that they would think I was crazy. But I did have psychic abilities and I tried to use them as best I could. As I grew older, my psychic abilities improved and I started to see angels and I started to see holy figures and they told me that they wanted me to pass on the word of a single deity. It was met with much resistance at the time, but I did my best. Okay. Did you marry several women? Upon the passing of my wife, I did accept several women into marriage. They were women that had lost their husbands and I wanted to provide for them as best I could. Yeah. What is your opinion of polygamy? I have no problem with individuals having multiple wives. It, if the women agree to it, then it is an acceptable way of life. There are many religions that have multiple wives for their male members and as long as they live good lives and follow very simple teachings, it is, it is possible that having multiple lives can be a very good thing. Yeah. Did you learn from a particular spiritual teacher? I did not learn from an individual human spiritual teacher. I did read about historic religions and historic individuals, but I relied upon the images that were coming to me. I started to see the Archangel Gabriel. He came to me with information and I would try to follow the information that was given to me. Okay. What sets you apart from other prophets? I think the fact that the people believed what I spoke. In the beginning it was very difficult. 
people thought that I was crazy and they feared that if they drew away from the multiple gods that they were worshiping that those gods would turn upon them and bring them bad luck or bad karma. I was very convincing, if I must say so myself. The people that began to follow me thought that I did truly speak the words of God and they believed and they would bring others to me. So once the word got out that others believed that I was speaking of the God, there were many that wanted to follow me. That's great. Did you have Jewish and Christian neighbors and how was your relationship with them? There were, there were Jewish people that we knew. After all, we were merchants and we traveled to different parts of the then, of the then known world. The Jewish people were very good merchants and we did know some Christians. Keep in mind that at that time the Christian faith was in a very early stage and the Christians were preaching that they had the true God. So there were times that there was animosity between the Christians and my followers. Okay, here we go. I hope I pronounced this correctly. The Sahaba were the closest companions of Muhammad. Were all of your companions Sahaba faithful or have you been betrayed? While I was living, they were all very faithful to me. Upon my death, they decided that in some areas they would vary from my teachings. But during my lifetime, I would say that they were very faithful to me. Okay. Did you see heaven and hell during your lifetime? I had images in my head of heaven and hell. I tried to make the images as realistic as possible to my followers and my descriptions were so accurate that many of them believed that I had actually participated in a journey between heaven and hell. Gabriel was very good in explaining things to me. I never described hell in the way that modern people think of it. I described it as a very, very bad place and I said that individuals did not want to go to hell because of their transgressions. The concept of hell had been formulated by the Christian Church, which at that time was controlled by the Roman Catholic Church, and they had developed the concept of a hell where individuals burn for eternity. That concept overlapped into what I spoke of, and individuals adopted that concept, but that adoption or understanding came after my passing. Did your tribe allow you to spread your message or were you prosecuted, persecuted and expelled? In the beginning, my tribe did not take any active actions against my teachings. What did happen as I became more important and as more people and as more people followed my teachings, 
my tribe realized that my actions in speaking against their multiple deities were going to weaken them. So they became a very outspoken opponent of what I was teaching. Okay. During your lifetime, did you consider yourself a prophet or a military leader? That is a difficult question. In the beginning, I simply wanted to bring people to understand the messages that I was receiving from God. As I received more and more followers and my powers grew, the individuals in tribes joined together to militarily stop what I was speaking. I was forced to become a military leader in order to preserve the existence of my teachings and to protect my followers. As my life progressed, there were actually times that I thought of myself more as a military leader than as a teacher. Did God inspire the Holy Quran through the angel Gabriel? Gabriel came to me repeatedly and gave me knowledge that was incorporated into the Holy Quran. The Quran is the foundation for the Muslim faith. Islam is built upon the teachings that are in the Holy Quran. Is everything in this book true? As with all written documents that were made by the ancients, the writers would exaggerate and put in ideas that they felt would lead to the success of the teachings. That is, was very prominent in the Christian Bible and as you have taught many times, many of the Gospels do not contain the true teachings of Jesus. As in the case of the Bible, the ancient authors did include information that was exaggerated from my teachings. Okay. Does the Quran contain any of your personal opinions? It was difficult for me to determine what was my personal opinions and what were the opinions given to me by Gabriel and the other Holy Spirits that came forward for me. Just as I know Barry has trouble translating what is his thoughts and what are messages delivered to him, I went through the same process. There are things in the Holy Quran that do reflect my personal thoughts and my opinions. Okay, the Hadith contains reports about what you said and what you did. What is your opinion of the Hadith and is most of it true? A large percentage of the Hadith is quite accurate. However, once again I would point out that the individuals that wrote the Hadith did incorporate many of their own opinions. And by the time that it was written, many memories had failed. There were little contemporary notes taken of my teachings. As in the instance of the Christian Gospels, 
much of it was written from memory. And memories fade and recollections are influenced by the opinions of the author. Okay. What is the meaning of the Muslims praying five times a day? It was said that God wanted Muslims to pray 50 times a day. That was an exaggeration. Because of the fact that it was written that members of the Islam faith should pray so many times, it was thought that by praying five times per day that it would satisfy the requirement of prayer to Allah. It is a way to continuously remind members of the faith that prayer is to be given to Allah and that that prayer is very important. Prayer is how you communicate with God. And if you pray five times per day, it was thought that the prayer would be surely heard and answered. Sounds very reasonable. The Hajj is the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. What is the meaning of Hajj? The Hajj is intended for members of the faith to show respect and honor to the foundation upon which the church was built. It was thought that if all members of the faith were to return to Mecca, the holiest city in our faith, that it would renew their strength and renew their conviction to follow the teachings. It was thought that by requiring all who were capable to return to Mecca, that it would guarantee that the faithful would have their faith renewed and by being in those surroundings would feel closer to Allah. That makes sense. When Muslims fast, they abstain from pleasures like smoking, drinking, and sexual intercourse between sunrise and sunset. What is the meaning of fasting? It was thought in the early days that fasting would bring you nearer to God. Many people when they fast would have images in their minds and it was thought that that was how you could receive messages from God. Fasting became an important part of our religion and it was thought that such fasting would bring individuals closer to God. Okay. During the Eid al-Hadha, animals are sacrificed ritually. One third of their meat is consumed by the family offering the sacrifice, while the rest is distributed to the poor and the needy. What is the meaning of Eid al-Adha? In the early times, there was very much poverty. There were many people that would have trouble supporting themselves. So it was thought by having such an animal sacrifice and that two-thirds of the meat would be given to the poor and needy, that it would help support those that needed the help. 
What is your spiritual level in the hereafter? As a member of the soul family of God, my spirit resides on the highest level closest to Him. He chose to send my soul back to earth to carry out His words, and I did my best. And He has rewarded me when I returned, and I am on the highest level, which is the closest to God. Muslims believe the saints and prophets will intercede for the sinners on the Day of Judgment. What would you say about that belief? That is a belief that is similar to the belief that Christians have in the book of Revelations. Revelations contains very little truth. Revelations taught that there would be an end times and that in that time things would take place, that there would be judgment and souls redeemed. Now that I am over here, I realize that there will not be an end time that is brought about by God. That is not to say that humans cannot bring an end through their weapons of mass destruction to humanity, but the end of human development will not come at the hands of God. Have you reincarnated since your time as Muhammad? I have not. God has chosen to keep me close to Him and to have me try to lead others to following the universal teachings of coexistence and love. I have not returned, but should He ask me to do so, I would not hesitate. What were the circumstances of your death? I became ill. I had been very, very active, and those activities had weakened my heart. I had a heart attack, as you would describe it today, and I passed from natural causes. What do you think about the conflicts that arose after your death and the division of the Muslims into Sunnis and Shiites? I was very saddened by this. I did not expect that there would be such a separation. My followers had opinions of their own and it resulted in two factions being created between my followers. That brought about animosity and it brought about much conflict and that conflict is still raging today. I wish that the members of my faith would reunite and follow simple teachings of coexistence and love. Do you act as a spirit guide? I guide many. This is one thing that God wants of me and I have tried to influence the leaders of the two factions to come together. Ancient animosities have been so strong that my attempts have not been successful. I do attempt to lead the leaders of our faith today and I will continue to do so in the future.
Okay, how do your followers ask for your help? They may simply just pray to me. I want everyone to understand that all prayers are heard. If you ask for my presence, I will be there. As a member of the highest realm of heaven, I can be in many places at the same time. My energy can be split through many areas and I can hear many prayers from individuals. If you ask for me, I can have angels assist me and we will attempt to see if your prayers can be answered. That's amazing. What do you think about the respect and the sanctification that you receive from the Muslim community today? I am quite honored and in many ways surprised at how the Muslim community still respects me and my teachings. In some respects I would wish that members of my faith would be more tolerant towards other religions and accept that all religions of the world must coexist together. In general, I want to thank all who believe in me and all who honor me. I tried to bring the truth to all in the best of my abilities. I am very pleased that I have left such a lasting impact upon humanity. Okay. What do you think about the law of marriage and inheritance rights based on Islam, which gives priority to men? Keep in mind that when those laws were written, the men did all they could to carry the burden of support for the family and in gaining wealth and possessions. It was thought that since men were physically stronger than women and that in most instances they performed the roles of protecting and maintaining the families, that the laws should favor the men over the women. It was thought that if properties were given to women, they would not be able to maintain the quality. So the ancient laws were written in favor of men. Today, the modern world is much different. It would be more just if the laws were revised so that women who were capable of maintaining the wealth and properties were treated equally to the men. Okay, some Muslims have chosen to convert to Christianity or other religions. What do you think about that? I would prefer that individuals that are members of my faith would remain in, that, in our faith. However, I also understand that in modern times the teachings of other faiths could seem more appropriate to individuals. If an individual desires to follow another religion, I would prefer that they are not ostracized or put through physical harm because 
of that change. What do you think about the commemoration of the death of Hussein, your grandson, among the Shiites? The, the commemoration of the death of my grandson can be a very appropriate thing. It can also be used as a way of splitting the members of our faith. I would hope that all of Islam would respect the death of my grandson and use it to unite the faith. What is your opinion about the punishment of adultery and homosexuality in Islam? When I lived, adultery was a very, a very important, I should not use the word important. When I lived, adultery was very much frowned upon and was punished harshly. It was thought that harsh punishment for such actions would avoid individuals from creating those activities. It was also thought that homosexuality was a sin and that it was contrary to the norm of which individuals were living. Now that I'm on the other side, I understand that homosexuality can be part of a life lesson that an individual is sent back to learn. I would hope that the laws concerning homosexuality would be changed and that individuals, even though it is different from the norm, would be allowed to pursue the lifestyle because it is indeed a choice that is made before the soul returns. Okay, was the Isra and the Mirage a spiritual experience, an astral projection, or just a dream vision? The two that you mentioned were the result of very vivid, vivid and lucid dreams that I had. I would check with Gabriel and he would tell me that such visions were very important and that I was indeed capable at times of having my soul leave my body but my soul did not venture upon the journey in physical form. Okay. What is your opinion about the Antichrist? There are many that are opposing any form of deity in your modern world. There are many that are speaking out against the existence of any God and those people that are doing such damage to having, having individuals following a faith could be considered an antichrist. There is not going to be a single Antichrist, but there is actually an army of them walking the earth today. Did you take parts of your teachings from Christianity or Judaism? Yes. I had been able to read about both religions, and I did follow 
some of the thoughts that were written in their early documents. Much of what I taught did come from my mental images and dreams, but there were certain documents or certain information in those early documents that contained universal teachings. And even though I worded them differently, I did take concepts from other doctrines and tried to incorporate them into my teachings. Okay. There are many similarities between Islam and Christianity. For instance, Islam believes that in the seven heavens, and we teach in the seven realms of heaven. Islam accepts Jesus as a prophet. Why is there so much animosity between Muslim and Christians? Much of that animosity can be traced back to the Middle Ages. The Christians wanted to possess areas of the Holy Land and members of the Muslim faith also wanted to possess those same lands. There was much conflict through the Crusades and there was an immense amount of violence between those religions through the decades. Some of the animosity that is felt dates to those old feelings. Today, it is often believed that members of the Christian faith are still trying to possess areas that are very important to members of Islam. There are radical members of Islam that profess violence towards any other faith and obviously that will generate violence towards members of our faith. What it takes is for all religions to focus on coexistence and upon love. Very much so. Okay, what is the real meaning of sensual pleasures in Auhur Alain in paradise that we find in the Quran? In, in the early days of writing the scriptures, the pleasures of heaven could only be thought of as it pertained to human ple pleasures. For instance, sexual relations were an immense source of pleasure for ancient members as they are today. So it was interpolated that if heaven was to be this incredible place, it would have to incorporate all of the physical pleasures that were noted. It was impossible for the ancients to understand the true grandeur of heaven. It cannot be truly appreciated until you pass and are accepted into the realms. When you are accepted, you are in spirit and you do not have a physical body. So therefore, it would be impossible to have such physical pleasure without a physical body. But understand this, heaven is incredible and there is no way that it can be described. You've heard that many times, so it must be true. Okay, many Muslims try to follow your lifestyle. What do you think about that? I am honored that many try to follow my lifestyle. But I was affected by many events that were taking place around me. 
and my lifestyle was affected by many violent happenings and today situations are much different. I would be quite pleased if people would simply emulate my teachings of love and getting along with others. I am honored that they try to emulate my lifestyle, but it is not necessary for that to take place, for them to be accepted into the realms. Why are alcohol, pork, and non-halal meats prohibited in Islam? In ancient times, pork possessed trichinosis, which would kill humans because there was no known cure for that disease. The meat was outlawed in order to protect humans from that disease. Today, with modern sanitary standards, it is, would not be considered as important for individuals to be protected. Okay, what about the alcohol? Alcohol affects the mind of individuals. Alcohol can bring anger and violence to individuals that normally lead good lives. Yeah. Okay, what do you think of those who want to, want to apply old Islamic laws instead of modern laws? It is not possible for Muslims to adhere to the ancient laws and have them progress in modern society to the point that they will need to progress in order to participate in the great advances that will be that humans will face in the future. Many of the old laws are very good, but many of them should be modified to adapt to modern times. Just as the United States has amended their constitution and changed their laws through, the, through time, leaders of the faith should understand that there should also be moderation and change to help the modern members of our faith to compete and to move forward with human evolution. Okay. Why did you say, if you knew what I know, you would weep much and laugh little? I was shown in my dreams future events and I was shown that there would be many violent times ahead for members of our faith. I made that statement because I understood of events that would be taking place that would harm our, in our faith and would make it difficult for members of our faith to advance. Okay. Muslims believe in torment of the grave where the souls of the unrighteous are punished by two angels in the grave. What is your opinion of torment of the grave? Now that I am on this side, I know that upon passing the soul energy leaves the human body. The soul energy progresses into heaven and there is no longer a relationship with the body that is put into the grave. 
Therefore, there is no punishment of the soul in the grave. The soul is judged when it comes to heaven, and it is there that any karma that is required will be placed upon the soul. Yeah. Why don't we find anything about the principle of reincarnation in your teachings? Reincarnation was not an important part of the lessons that were told to me. It was very, very difficult for the ancients to understand the concept of reincarnation. It was an easy concept to understand that the soul would advance to heaven. Many of the individuals were very poor and uneducated and reincarnation would have been a very difficult concept. There are many of you today that cannot grasp the concept of reincarnation. So it would be impossible for those living 1500 years ago to understand the concept. Yeah. Were Adam and Eve the first humans? No. Adam and Eve was the only way that the ancients could conceive of the beginning of humanity. They could not understand evolution and they realized that the only way that a human form could be developed was through the relationship of a man and a woman. They did not understand the true creative power of God. Yeah. What, is your, what are your thoughts on the theory of evolution? Humans have evolved. You can see it through studying what is available in written documents. And you can see it in evidence that has been left by the ancients. Humans have evolved. They have evolved through the guidance of God. I use the word God. I could use the word Allah. I could use any term that you want, but the single deity has guided humans through the years and through that guidance, they have advanced. So evolution is the result of the actions of the single God. Okay. What do you think of people who say that we pray to God, but he does not hear our prayers? I can assure you that all prayers are heard. But there are prayers that are contrary to the life plans that you prepared before you entered an incarnate life. God will not answer prayers that will alter a life plan. He can perform miracles in certain instances, but if you are asking for something that was a part of your predetermined life plan, that prayer cannot be answered. You can pray for guidance and you can pray for actions. And quite often those prayers can be answered. But if, for instance, a death by cancer was part of your life plan, God will not intervene and change that path. It is a suffering that you must learn and if you avoid learning that suffering then it is a lesson that will have to be repeated in future lifetimes. 
Hey, what is your opin opinion of the fanatics who carry out terrorist operations against innocent people? I am truly saddened to see that certain members of the faith have taken our words and have translated them to take a religion that was meant to be one of the kindest and finest religions ever founded and use the words to create untold violence and suffering. I, I used violence. I was forced to. I had to lead military actions in order to preserve the safety and lives of my followers. I do not prescribe the use of violence to force individuals into confessing for our faith. Violence is something that leads others to violence and as that violence develops into the hatred, such hatred will exist for hundreds of years. I have seen that in my own faith and I have seen that in many other instances. I wish that violence would become non-existent. It is truly love and a desire for coexistence that can make all of the different faiths of the world and the different countries thrive. Yeah. Will there be a time in the future when your teachings, the teaching of Jesus and other religions will become united? If humans manage to overcome the current hatred and violence, it is logical to assume that a universal knowledge of God will take over and will affect all of the individuals that are living human lives. It is true that on the other planets the advanced cultures only follow a single belief structure and that is one of love and coexistence. So if the humans truly can reach the point of arriving to the degree of knowledge that will allow them to advance and become members of the advanced civilizations. It will be inevitable that they follow the teachings of the one God. Okay. Muslims believe that Mahdi will appear at the end of times to rid the world of evil and injustice. What do you think about the person named Mahdi who will come in the future to spread justice to the world? There will not be an end of times, but there will be individuals that God will send back to try to lead countries and religions to follow his teachings. Since there will be no end times as decreed by God, then obviously there cannot be a body that will be sent back at that time. But there will be sacred leaders that will be returned in order to attempt to bring individuals to the universal belief. 
Will there ever be a time when Sunnis and Shiites will reconcile? I wish in my heart that I had taken precautions while I was in life so that the belief structure of my teachings would not be split and utilized to create such as a breakage between the members of our faith. If the leaders of the two factions step back and understand that it is only through coexistence and love that all members of the faith will be able to advance, then it will be possible. However, I do not see that happening in the near future. Sadly. What do you advise those who believe in you as a prophet in order to become a good person? I would advise them to simply follow my simple teachings. Do not let my teachings be overcomplicated. Follow my words and understand that my words will lead to following the universal teachings of a single deity, be it God, Allah, the Source, however you want to refer to it. I think that my teachings will do much for individuals that try to follow them. Try to think how my teachings should be adopted to modern times. You live in a world far different than when I walked the earth and when my teachings were recorded. It is important that you relate my teachings to the modern world. If you do that and learn to avoid anger, drive hatred from your heart, and show love for one another, then you will be accepted into heaven as a very, very good person. Yeah. Muhammad, what is your opinion about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict? Will it last much longer? That is another thing that saddens me terribly. There is so much hatred between the Palestinians and the Israeli that I really see no immediate answer to the situation. If it is going to be solved, all violence must end. The end of violence between the Israelis and the Palestinians is a foundation that could be used for understanding. The small militant groups that will only stop when the nation of Israel is destroyed must be ostracized and gotten rid of by the Palestinians that want to leave, live normal lives and advance economically. It is only upon the foundation of nonviolence between the two countries that true peace can ever be obtained. What do you think about the death punishment? If an individual takes the life of another for no reason, then I feel that 
a death punishment is appropriate. However, if an individual breaks with some of the rules of my faith, they should not be killed and have their life plans cut short. There are other ways, short of violence, to produce justice and to protect tradition. Okay. What are your thoughts on vegetarians? A vegetarian lifestyle is a very healthy lifestyle. It is a choice that individuals can make and it will help them in staying in good health. Vegetarians should not be criticized and vegetarianism is certainly not necessary to lead a good life that will provide satisfactory judgment when you return to the realms. Now, I've been really looking forward to your answer to my last question. What is your advice for the advancement of humanity? Humanity can only advance if they follow the teachings of coexistence, love, and finding peace among all of the great countries of your planet. I tried to talk of peace and I tried to teach that individuals had to get along and worship a single God. Individuals have got to respect their families. Fathers have got to raise their children. I see much going on in your major cities today. I see individuals that create children and abandon them and leave the mother to raise them on their own. Children need love, they need a stable family, and they need to be educated in a way that they can advance and be in a position to marry and economically raise their own families. There are many individuals that are drawing away from an education that can provide the stability that they need to lead good family lives. Individuals have got to rid themselves of biases. I can assure you that when your soul returns over here, there are no dark skins, there are no white skins, there are no differences that would split individuals from getting along with one another. There is no evil on this side of the veil of life. Evil only exists in your world. It is very important that individuals understand what is evil and do their best to avoid spreading evil in the form of hatred, in the form of anger, in the form of distrust, or in the form of a bias such as 
a racial bias, a bias towards individuals that are homosexual, all must get along together. When you are over here, all of your souls are equal. And when you reach the point that when all of the incarnate souls are equal, then humanity will advance in the way that God wants it to advance. I thank you for allowing me to come through today. I hope that my words have not offended anyone. When you arrive on this side, you will understand that many of the things of which you spoke when human are not as you spoke. But you will also understand that when you are on this side, all things are good. Heaven is an incredible place, and all souls will come to the same heaven. So, I hope that my words today have helped. I hope that you will listen to them, and I hope that you will bear no animosity <coughs> towards Barry and Connie, who have brought you my words tonight. So, I am going to say goodbye. I want you to know that I am still watching over all of you, and I am still here to try to lead you and to have you understand that only through coexistence and love can humans truly advance. So goodbye, and please listen to my teachings and follow my words. Mohammed, thank you so much. Or I not only was not offended what she had to say, I was inspired by what she had to say. You are a wonderful soul. Thank you so much for all that. I hope that individuals will truly take the time to listen to your message and they will understand that when we channel all the great religious figures that their words are really quite similar. So thank you for listening to this audio and video. You can hear our messages. We do a podcast every week called A Weekly Message from Jesus. But we make a point of trying to interview all of the great faiths and all the great leaders of the faith in order to show that there are many paths to heaven and it is all through following the words of love and coexistence as Muhammad told you today. So goodbye, thank you, and I hope that you listen to some of our other messages. May the Lord bless you all.